I'm in Mexico, come to make a film about the megaliths in Mexico. Behind me you can see the Pyramid of the Moon. Uh, we are at Teotihuacan, which is one of the most famous sites in Mexico. Uh, Mexico is really famous for its pyramids, not really its megaliths, but they kind of do exist. I found some things online where basically it looks like these more recent constructions have been built on top of megaliths, which is something we see all over the world. Um, so Teotihuacan represents a culture that was in this area. They existed from 100 BC to 500 AD. They built out of much smaller blocks, so they're not megalithic at all. This would, could be quite easy to build, although a construction of this size is not so easy. I'm not sure exactly what they class as a pyramid because these structures around the outside also look like pyramids. And there's plenty of them that run down this Avenida de los Muertos, the Avenue of the Dead. This leads to the Pyramid of the Sun, which is another massive construction. Uh, they both are orientated to uh, north, south, east, west, like the pyramids uh, other places around the world, particularly Giza. They have some kind of uh, like coating. You can see in many places around that it was kind of coated in some kind of like almost concrete or cement. And then that looks like it was painted on top of as well. So this is heavily eroded or degraded. There are megalithic blocks. There's one just over here. It looks like a two-ton megalithic block. Uh, you would just be able to see it just over there. Um, and there are, down this other end of this area here, there is two more pyramids. One's called the uh, Pyramid of the Feathered Serpent. And down there, there are some really interesting pieces of evidence suggesting that there was a culture before this more recent one um, that was the Teotihuacan culture. I've already been to a couple of sites that were really interesting, had some sort of carvings in the side of mountains. And I've also been to a couple that were just completely closed because we've got this COVID thing going on. You might be able to see people with masks on. Um, so I'm not really sure exactly where, what we're going to be filming. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get into sites. Um, we're going to go and explore some that are much lesser known. Uh, Hugh Newman with Megalithomania has done some great work and covered a lot of the sites that I wanted to go to, like Mitla and uh, some of the others. And I'm going to try and get to them, but if I can't, this might be a very short film, but we shall see. We're going to do our best and we're going to explore as we do and try and show you some of the, the evidence that there was a megalithic culture that preceded all of these uh, pyramids, basically. So we shall see. Hopefully we'll be able to get into some of these sites. From the Pyramid of the Moon, we walked to the other side of the Avenue of the Dead, passing the Pyramid of the Sun and a host of other structures along the way until we finally reached the citadel containing the pyramid dedicated to the feathered serpent Quetzalcoatl, the infamous Mesoamerican deity. So this is the pyramid of the feathered serpent. Um, you can see again it's built out of these smaller blocks. Um, there's another what is just called a platform here, one of the largest ones, walking down the avenue of the dead. There's all these kind of like platforms, which could really be classed as kind of step pyramids, really. Over there, you'll see a few more. That one there, I felt a lot of energy coming on the top of that for those who are into their kind of like etheric or more subtle energies. There's some platforms on this side too. Um, but none are as big or as obvious as this one, which actually just looks like a step pyramid. So back to the Pyramid of the Feathered Serpent. Um, it's the smallest of the three pyramids. Um, I think it's got the best evidence personally of layers of construction and maybe some kind of megalithic constructions before this. You'll be able to see in there how there are these megalithic blocks and these, these heads. Some dragon heads going up the side there. And these look quite megalithic, really. You can see the obvious differences in the construction here. You've got the smaller blocks and they've used some mortar or cement to stick the bits together. Whereas here they don't bother. They've just got such perfectly cut and shaped pieces that they don't need mortar. They don't need sticking together. They just stick together perfectly. Um, you'll be able to see here what I was talking about, how they, were, they use some kind of like plaster or kind of some kind of concrete -y kind of covering of these smaller blocks. 
and these ones have been painted as well they were all seem to be painted they seem to have a lot of red paint at their disposal down through there you can see again there's loads of megalithic looking blocks and on the floor around here you've got examples of them just laying around so this would be two of the heads and then on the other side you can see very sort of flat surface it basically looks like rectangular kind of shapes i reckon that would have just slotted in there you can see on this one on the on the edge there it kind of would slot in there so very deliberate shaping and flat surfaces um, for these megalithic blocks looks like they were able to you know shape and carve these blocks this one here is very cuboid looking lots of flat surfaces and this surface here is also particularly flat certainly looks like it's been you know created some kind of tool there are also some more on the other side of the platform on the other side of the pyramids there's a part of me out there with you far from my mind just over there there is a little sort of like entrance going underground and here you've got more entrances there's doorways so i reckon there's loads of tunnels and all sorts going on underground here really beautiful that's where i saw energy and i'm going to go over there and see if i can uh, use the old field filter and see what i can see so this is where i saw there was I felt a lot of energy on top of this platform this is the old field filter and I see nothing. Uh, I'm gonna have a quick look. Go upstairs. So, yeah, I felt a large amount of energy on this platform don't see anything through the old field filter and I buried one of my crystals just over there because of the energy I felt um, stand up here and see if we see it looks like there's the pyramid that's the pyramid of the Sun pyramid of the moon probably wouldn't see anything from this distance, although there should be something there. But this appears to have some energy. This area around the Quetzalcoatl Pyramid is thought to be the oldest part of the complex, although there are still numerous sections throughout that have not been excavated. The Avenue of the Dead is roughly 40 meters wide and more than two kilometers long, orientated 15 degrees east of true north. And due to the ancients being so interested in the cardinal points and the alignments, this may give us a clue to a more ancient birth to this site, with plenty of scholars having hinted at the site being possibly pre-Olmec. The Pyramid of the Sun has a similar sized base to the Pyramid of Giza, although it is not as tall, and like the Giza Plateau area, the site of Teotihuacan was underwater at certain points in its history, with the inhabitants using boats to move around. Some have suggested that this was some way of manipulating energy, while others have suggested this was a metal extraction facility, like at Tiwanaku and Pumapunku in Bolivia. The tunnels under the ground suggest to me that they were certainly manipulating the flow of water for some purpose or other. Another fascinating discovery at this location was mica sheets buried under the pyramids of the sun and moon. Mica that is thought to have been brought from Brazil roughly 4,000 kilometers away, joining dots to other parts of the world. 
These sheets could have been insulators or acted as condensers in part of the metal smelting process or even providing a material with different electrical properties, creating a potential difference to promote energy flow. There have been suggestions that the megalith next to the moon pyramid is a water goddess and the companion of the god of storm and lightning and on close inspection it certainly looks carved and even like a seriously eroded Olmec head. So I was pretty unlucky when it came to the virus situation as most of the sites were closed and I was seriously gutted when I got to the gates of the pyramid at Tula and found out I wasn't going to be able to see the rather impressive warrior statues on top of the pyramid. I was curious to see for myself the large basalt rocks forming the statues which look megalithic and have not been sourced from any local quarries. I did though get a stroke of fortune when I found out there was something even bigger sat right outside a museum in the middle of Mexico City. Okay, so this here is right outside the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City. Uh, forgive the noise, as you can see it's right next to the road as well, so there's crossings and all sorts of noisiness going on there. But um, this was officially a deity from the Teotihuacan culture. Um, it's the god of water, basically, and that culture was heavily influenced by agriculture, and uh, that's, I guess, why they were so interested in water. Yeah, officially between 100 and 850 AD. I find this fascinating because of the size of it, basically. So this is supposed to weigh 154 tons. And uh, I'm guessing they measured it or weighed it when um, they moved it. Uh, but this has been heavily eroded. You can see that basically the face is missing on that side there. You've got an arm and then it's come off on that side. So it would have weighed a lot more. So I've shown different monoliths over the years, like Menea de Brise in France, which is over 300 tons, or would have been, because it's now broken into four pieces. And there's the Browns Hill Dolmen with 150 ton capstone. And it, it fascinates me how they would have moved these massive rocks and how they would have moved this in the, the ways they tell us, like with ropes and logs and all that kind of stuff. God only knows. Uh, the back is kind of interesting. Uh, I've got to just walk around these rather nasty spiky looking plants. Uh, down the back there you can see it's uh, there's no sort of details to it at all. It almost looks like it's been just sort of carved and cut out of a mountain. Like it was maybe embedded in something and they wanted to move it so in more modern times they've carved it out the back because if this was standing on its own surely they would have you know I don't know put a backpack on there or giving him some kind of back or something and this is like got some really deformed god uh, but yeah a fascinating fascinating piece and, uh, and it's certainly megalithic it turns out that mexico is covered in sites with megalithic structural features but due to the virus almost every site was behind closed gates and fences I did manage to visit a few that weren't closed off as they were lesser known and have until now had very little coverage online. To tell the story of those sites I couldn't see, I've had to piggyback on the work of others a little bit. That is until I can return and take my own footage. Brian Forrester has done some fantastic work documenting the structures around Mexico, commonly finding larger blocks being reused or built upon with smaller brickwork. For example, at Mitla there are some very impressive six-ton lintels on pillars and some standing stones built into the structure. There are numerous Mexican sites with remnants from the megalithic builders and I highly recommend his videos to see just how many. Hugh Newman has also done some fantastic work. He has been studying the Olmecs for over a decade, visiting a host of sites documenting megaliths and strange anomalies associated with them. We will come back to the Olmecs later in this film, but I highly recommend his videos also. One of the sites without an entrance or any fencing was an hour's drive east of Mexico City and was sitting on top of a rather large hill. All right, so I'm on my own at this site. This site's called uh, Tesco Titzingo or something like that. It doesn't sound very Spanish. It's a really interesting site. You can see some of it. This is hardly any of it, actually, but you can see some of the terracing going off here. But I wanted to show this site because there's all sorts of signs of layers of civilizations and layers of different building, and in particular, the different styles that we've been sort of like talking about. So you've got the, I'm just going to take the camera now and show you basically, but you've got the um, 
sort of brick, smaller brickwork, which has uh, sort of cement and mortar. And then you've got these big blocks. So this one just looks like it's been dumped on the side. Um, this area here, again, you'll be able to see, you know, this is like small bricks, small bricks on the side here. And then it goes into an area that's kind of been carved out of the side of this mountain. Uh, there's also some more megalithic blocks. And these just look like they've been dumped here, really. They just look like they've been chucked out of the way. So, yeah, these ones. And this one. Um, so, yeah, off in that direction, it goes all the way around this hill. And we're going to go and have a look at some of the different bits of evidence that suggest there was possibly some megalithic builders here or, you know, this civilization that can easily manipulate and shape rock. So I find this really interesting. Now, this is actually what attracted me to this site. I saw photos of this particular spot online. And that just really shows me how somebody in the past has just easily carved out shapes into the into the mountain. This is called the Bagno del Rey, the, the King's Bath. And if I step down here, <laughs> we'll be able to see like some of these flat surfaces that have been carved into the side of the mountain here. It's all pretty pretty technically gifted really. Firstly that's pretty circular for people who weren't supposed to have had tools and things and then you've got like all sorts of recesses um, and if you just look at some of the flat surfaces from here really very impressive um, this reminds me of i saw this at petra there was a circular shape carved into the rock and then there was some runoff as well um, and i've seen shapes like this all over the place There's, like all sorts of carvings in rocks and places like turkey and france um, so it's good to link up to other parts of the world again another really flat surface there it's pretty cool and also you'll be able to see those steps going up there now those are carved into the side of the mountain as well there are steps on this site where they have just been built out of the smaller blocks um, and there are also steps that are just carved into the side of the mountain and that looks pretty impressive again reminds me of Petra um, so there's definite links to other places around the world now you can see some ruins down there. Now this whole area was supposed to have been a massive ancient city. I think it was called Tasoko or something like that. I'm not too sure, but there's I think something like a quarter of a million people that lived here. But this is really cool. Okay, so another round circular hole. This is called the Bath of the Queen or the Queen's Bath. Um, again, you've got these like layers of craftsmanship or building or civilizations. That's obviously been carved out. Again, pretty damn circular. Uh, more steps that have actually been carved out of the mountain, out of the bedrock. And it looks like they've basically, again, you can see what looks like there was a site here before and then they've kind of just come and built all this terracing on top of it. You can see two channels here that's megalithic you can see that's a big probably a, about a ton in weight that stone there and then there's this one here which is a little bit smaller um, and they've got this rather rubbish compared to the queen's bath this is just like built out of the smaller rock and it's not very circular um, and then again if you compare it to that one it's quite an obvious difference um, and yeah so you've got all this terracing goes off down there you've got all this so 
looks like in Aztec times or whenever really some more modern civilizations come along and adapted this there's another massive megalithic block up the top here uh, in a minute up this hill I'm going to go up to the patio of the gods which looks pretty damn fascinating you can see aqueducts all over the place I say aqueduct I guess water channels whatever really I mean I guess this is a bit too small, but it's certainly a water channel. And some of them, again, this one looks like it's been carved out of the bedrock. And some of them look like they've just been built out of the smaller blocks. And then there's a massive megalithic stone here. And again, I'm not sure that that's natural, really. It looks like they've purposefully done that, but hard to tell. So yeah, let's shoot up to the patio of the gods. The patio was close to the top of the hill with lovely views over the valleys below. There wasn't a huge amount to see, although there was a pink looking megalithic stone with some interesting carvings on. Some accurate lines, a flower, some grooves and some concentric circles. On the side wall there were some lines and some more grooves, which I suspect were the feet of some figurines which if true would suggest there had been some serious erosion or removal of objects from this site. I planted another crystal and then continued right to the top of the hill and the Temple of the Sun where you can see plenty of terracing and just how big the site is. There was another stone with some circular carvings and more flat looking surfaces. From the other side of the hill, its shape looks rather pyramidal. There is a cave and another curiously placed large megalithic stone. At other locations around the site, there are more channels carved into the bedrock. Random what look like cuts from a blade and more evidence that larger stone building materials were reused by a more modern civilization. The website where I discovered this archaeological site lists another site with similar shapes carved into the side of a mountain. Here thousands of tons of rock have been removed to create structures including a three-tiered pyramid. Annoyingly, I drove there to find out they had put gates on that one, so I couldn't see it. I did however manage to get into a site famous for its pyramid and its carvings, but which also had evidence of megalithic constructions. So this is the Olmec altar. Um, it's officially, there's a little sign down here, officially 800 to 500 BC. Um, for me it's certainly evidence of different styles of building and you know these are big blocks. And um, this one looks like it's well, you know, it's only a foot wide, but it goes up there for, well, till the end here. So it's pretty sizable. This one again is, you know, I don't know, it's hard to say how dense this is, but it feels pretty dense. So it's probably half a ton, I would say. Um, there is also another standing stone. I think it's been re-erected in modern times because there's a little bit of concrete on the bottom, but um, it's basically a standing stone and we are, probably 200 meters from the pyramid and the games avenue or whatever they call it so yeah this is interesting and um, there's supposed to be some rock paintings as well and um, there's tons and tons of megalithic stones all over the place as well as flies as you can probably see the flies are eating me to pieces but um yeah there's tons of really interestingly shaped rocks and megalithic stones around as we saw at uh, the previous site we were at so for me, again, there is definitely a sign of a megalithic culture, or at least a culture that was able to build with these huge stones. So fascinating. It's in a beautiful place. Really lovely day in Mexico uh, next to these two mountains. And uh, one of them you go up into to see these engravings in sort of little, little caves, I think. I haven't been up there yet. Uh, there is also on that um, menhir over there, that standing stone, there is some carving on the back. It looks like some kind of like humanoid figure. We can't really work out if it's a man or a woman, but um, seems to be like stroking this wall, I guess it is. Uh, there's carvings on this one too. This is uh, looking a bit like 
I guess like a bird. There's like a, a beak here, I think. Um, and there's carving on this one, but I can't really make out exactly what it is. So really interesting. I'm gonna have a little walk around and see if I can find some more carvings. The carvings are divided into two groups. The water dancing group found up the mountain and those carved on the stones and boulders at ground level. The best known carving is known as El Rey, or the King, depicting a life-size carving of a human-like figure seated inside a cave or even a craft of some kind. He is wearing a helmet, seems to be holding some kind of device, and there are spirals and possible rain clouds. Up the mountain you can also find cup marks like those found at Gebekli Tepe and on megaliths at many other sites around the globe. And walking around, there was an abundance of potentially former pieces of a megalithic construction. some pretty strong evidence of the more recent builders kind of building around what was already here as you can see these megalithic blocks like this and this one and then obviously you've got the smaller blocks I also point out the tree growing out of this one how many times have we seen that Seen that in loads of my videos. And up there, I think there's some sculptures up there. I'm gonna have a quick look. There's certainly some more larger stones incorporated into these walls built out of smaller blocks. If I walk up here, there's a great hole. Yeah, and there's like a big block, a big stone. So it's a really mystical place. There's a lovely energy, a lovely feel to the energy. Feels very sort of magical, fairy tale like. Almost feel like I'm in a bit of a dream. I've had that in sights before, so it's not unfamiliar to me. There's a, an amazing tree growing out the side of, a, of this hill over there. Absolutely amazing thing. So yeah, here's some more of the carvings. Hopefully you really see that. Hugh Newman covers these really well in one of his films on Megalithomania about this site. So I'm not really gonna go much into the carvings to be honest because I don't know much about them. They're hard to see and he's covered it so well, so. Beautiful, beautiful place. As I mentioned, there were numerous examples of trees coming out of the megalithic stones, a common observation from all the films we have made, and possibly evidence of megaliths increasing the survival chances of seeds. Before I left, I couldn't help looking through the old field filter, which looked pretty colourful when I pointed it at the mountain. Mexico is covered in sites from a variety of different civilizations, such as the Aztec, Tula, and the Teotihuacan cultures, so I chose a site at random to see if there were any remnants of megalithic buildings. A four hour drive northwest of Mexico City, there is an area that was densely populated before the Europeans arrived and I managed to find a site that wasn't closed due to COVID. Rauta is home to many structures, 22 pyramids have been identified, and there are a number of terraces and plazas, all constructed with smaller sized stones. One of the plazas is huge, and there are also sunken patios that might have been used for water collection. Several human burials with offerings were found in several places around the structure, 
although their origins are unknown. But the thing that interested me the most as I walked around the site was again the presence of megalithic looking boulders and some interestingly shaped stones. Sometimes she's lost, sometimes she's broken, sometimes she's closed, sometimes she's open, but lonely is a favorite place to be. She told me she was falling, I offered her my heart. But she only finds a comfort in not knowing just how hard she's gonna lie I told her she was special She almost let me in But she couldn't bear the thought of digging up the heart that she bear burying Lonely is her favorite when you start researching, you find remnants of megalithic structures in the south of Mexico and across the border in Guatemala. And although I didn't really get to see many of the sites I wanted to see, I saw enough to believe the civilization that has covered the planet in megalithic monuments did some building in this part of the world. Further evidence comes from the Olmec culture that left tons of megalithic evidence, most famously the heads weighing up to 40 tons, stones that were carried more than 150 kilometers from the Tuxla Mountains. Annoyingly for me, the Museo de Jalapa was also closed due to the virus, and this is where most of the heads sit in modern times. The Olmec culture stretched to the west of Mexico and all through Central America, possibly down as far as Costa Rica, and official dating has suggested they flourished around 1800 to 1200 BC. Their most impressive remnants are the stone heads, the first of which was found in the 1800s, but with the majority of the research and discoveries coming in the 1930s and 40s. In modern times there are 17 heads sitting in the museum, although another two possibilities have recently been found at La Venta, and another across the border with Guatemala near the impressive chambered tombs of Abadj Tabalik. The Olmec heads are fascinating structures, and again they have to make us question the official narrative. One obvious feature that jumps out straight away is the African looking faces on some of the pieces, forcing us to consider that Africans might have sailed across the ocean before Columbus. There are also some Polynesian, Asian and even European looking heads, and they all look completely different, much like the terracotta warriors from China. The heads are intricately carved, with defined facial features, helmets, beads and seemingly deliberate patterns on their heads, and the intricacy is more impressive when you consider most of them are made from andesite. The patterns of the heads are depicted on the roof of the museum and it has been suggested that they might represent geometric patterns or have significant numbers encoded into them. Cut marks like those we saw at Chaucatzingo have also been found on one of the heads, again showing a link to other megaliths around the globe. The Olmecs seem very aware of subtle energies, often choosing rock that had a relationship with magnetism and electrical energy. This magnetic effect is also found on some of the artifacts found in the museum and they link to other areas around the world, some looking like the Venus statues found in large numbers in Malta or other artifacts found in the Orkney Islands in Scotland or Adam's Calendar in South Africa. There is a reptilian looking head that looks very similar to one found on display in a museum in San Lierfa, Turkey, again joining dots between geographical locations and possibly showing influence of interesting beings in our past. There is another alien looking statue in Turkey that was found at Gebekli Tepe and its black eyes stand out as a unique feature, one that is repeated in a very similar looking artifact found at Poverty Point in the USA, which is also believed to have been influenced by the Olmecs. The Olmecs also created stone spheres which are found in small numbers in Mexico but much larger numbers in Costa Rica and this is another megalithic structure found at numerous locations around the planet. We can find many megalithic features at sites found in the heartland of the Olmec culture. San Lorenzo is thought to be the former Olmec capital, and here we find a 12 foot menhir, a 10 by 8 foot basalt rock with scooped out marks that look like they have been made from some kind of ice cream scoop when the rock was molten, something I have joked about in my previous videos. There are cup marks found on some of the rocks at this site also. There is a mysterious circular disc, which is now broken into numerous different pieces, but suggests some form of mechanical usage, especially as it is made from a red rock containing iron oxide, giving it unique magnetic and electrical properties. 
There are over 200 mounds, mounds being a feature also found all over the planet, particularly in the USA and parts of Europe. We find water channels, showing they were interested in manipulating the flow of water and possibly energy around the site, which sits in a location that has strange magnetic anomalies and could be why they chose this area to build in. They found 40 to 50,000 magnetite beads, like those found at Poverty Point just across the Gulf of Mexico in the USA, which also have magnetic properties and have the ability to affect the brain and pineal gland. There are links between Poverty Point and the Olmec culture, and it has been suggested that the Olmecs were messing with magnets and using them to affect consciousness. Poverty Point also sits in an area with magnetic anomalies and the builders seem to deliberately put organic and non-organic material in the mounds to create a flow of energy. Many of the Olmec heads were buried and it has been suggested that like Gobekli Tepe and the underground cities in Turkey, they were buried to hide the tools that could manipulate subtle energies or so-called magical powers. At Tres of Portes, there are more mounds and more interesting artefacts such as the huge piece of basalt which has acoustic or musical effects. There is a stone called the Stella Sea Stone which looks like a long count calendar, suggesting it was the Olmecs that passed the knowledge of calendars on to the Mayans. At La Venta there is a 110 foot high pyramid said to be one of the oldest in Central America. This site is also built on top of a magnetic and gravitational anomaly with water channels and water flow all over the complex and there's a river splitting and flowing either side of what is essentially an island. There are huge stones that look like heavily eroded statues with arms. There are altars and many many carvings on some of the rocks and the most impressive carved stone of them all is the famous Monument 19 very similar to a carved stone found in Egypt with a feathered reptilian figure wearing a strange helmet and carrying a so-called man bag. These bags are depicted on numerous artifacts and carvings around the world and could represent some kind of technology. At the barely excavated Laguna de los Cerros you find huge mounds. There are shaped and carved megalithic blocks, a carved table or coffer and more rocks with possible signs of machine work. From my last site I went to the largest pyramid in the world in Cholula, although it was closed, so I walked around the area and climbed up as high as I could to plant some crystals. This pyramid is not as tall as the Giza pyramid, but has a larger base or footprint, and a larger mass. It is so large in fact that when the Spanish conquered the area, they thought it was a hill and built a church on top. There are megalithic rocks at this site, such as these two huge slabs that must weigh a couple of tons each and this amazing stone that has a rectangular hole cut into it with a mortise and tenon joint on the top, like those found at Stonehenge. The stone was found on top of the pyramid in the 1970s, suggesting there was a construction of some kind on the top, and it is full of crystals, so it was maybe involved in the manipulation of energies in some way. Archaeologists have dug over 8 kilometers of tunnels under the pyramid, and in doing so they discovered that there are layers of construction. Smaller pyramids were built, and then larger ones built around them, and there are also satellite pyramids, or mounds, around the outside. Pyramids are found all over the planet, with recent discoveries in places such as Indonesia, Japan, Saudi Arabia, and the Cahokia Mounds in central USA. A number of researchers have stated that the pyramids at Teotihuacan are 130 degrees from the pyramids at Giza, part of a strategic positioning of certain ancient sites around the globe that seems to form a grid explaining why there are so many links between the Mexican ancient sites and other sites around the world.